Hello and welcome to Tech 18. I'm Ahmad Adnan and in this video we are going to discuss about one of the interesting topic which I like in fabric is the real time analytics, the real time intelligence. So event stream is actually one of the part of that. So get started with event stream in real time intelligence. So let me just read out this paragraph because there's an important thing here. Event stream is a feature in Microsoft Fabric that captures, transform, and route real time events to various destinations with a no code experience. You can add event data sources, routing destinations, and event processes when the transformation is needed to the event stream. Microsoft Fabric Event Store is monitoring is a monitoring option that maintains event from cluster and provides a way to understand the state of your cluster or workload at a given point in time. The event store services can be queried for events that are available for each entity and entity type in your cluster. This means you can query for events on a different levels, such as cluster, nodes, application, service, partitions, and partition replicas. The event store service also has the ability to correlate events in your cluster. By looking at events that were written at the same time from different entities, they are that may have impacted each other. The event store services can link these events to help the identifying causes for activities in your cluster. Another option for monitoring and diagnosis for Microsoft Fabric clusters is aggregating and collecting events using event flow. Yeah, so event flow is actually useful when you have a real time data. If you want to capture something and you want to monitor, analyze on the fly when the data is in motion, then this is a really useful feature for you. All right, now I'm into my fabric workspace here. So first of all, I need to change the workload from data engineering to real time intelligence. So in the home tab, you have multiple options. You need to click on the options. First of all, you need to click on event house. So clicking on this one, give it a name here. So I'd like to give demo, which is for today's date 2024 0506 has to be 0605 and click on create. All right, you have just created a your first event house. Use event house to efficiently group and manage your databases across projects. Each event house can include multiple databases with auto scaling for storage, CPU, and data investigation ingestion. You can make a database available in one link for other uses. By default, this functionality is inactive. When activated, only new data will be added to existing table. That's great. Yeah. Actually, it has given the message itself, but actually I thought to give the overview picture of that. So start by clicking on this one. It has added a demo data of today's one. An empty database was created with the event house to ingest data. So click get started. You will then be able to query it. OK, so add another database is here. So create a database and then click on get data to populate it with query data here. That's correct. And here we have option about check and balance storage option, which is here. Check how much data in one lake standard storage and how much is in cache storage and available for the fast query. Edit the cache policies to fit your needs. By default, one lake functionality is inactive here. All right. So after that, we have the option about compute minus refers. If I scroll down. So compute minutes refers to the amount of the time that co computational resources are utilized here. And then check the latest action, see what and when who is created and removed updated on the event house. Got it. All right. So this is the information which we have it here. And if I go to this one, these are all just the information here. So storage is one leg standard storage, and then we have database size, we have one leg storage cache, cache here. Uh, but where we need to enable this? If I click on this one database. Which is showing up here. All right, so if I click on this one database, it is now giving up the option about the one lake availability. Like it has given an initial message that if you want to keep that for further analytics, then we need to enable these options. What does it mean is like if you are using this one data in motion, you can do this in event stream and build your report, power report on top of that. But if you want to keep your data in one leg and do the further transformation with other kind of reporting requirement, then first of all, you need to keep this enable, convert this into enable and active, and then do the further working on any of your database on event stream. 
So when active, new tables in the database are available in one line. Because if you have already worked on this one KQL database, which is the event stream database here, in that case, the existing table is not going to come into the one leg. Only the new will come into the one leg. So first of all, you need to create database and then enable this one if you need that functionality and then start working on creating a tables. So I'm just selecting this one. So configuration update disabled due to an activity active on this lake house here. Yeah, that's beautiful. So the size of that compressed size and original size and compression ratio, everything we have it here. So now the thing is we need to load the data. So loading the data into this KQL, we have a sample data, local file, one leg, I use to read event hub or pipeline. So if your data coming up from the live from the event hub, you can also connect from here. Uh, in this case, we are going to use this sample data. So clicking on the sample data information, where we have a multiple options here: stock analytics, weather, metrics, and automotive operations, and other and all. Uh, or you can also use another way where we need to create event stream, and from that we can insert the data into this one. So while doing that, but before the, that, if this is the existing one, right? When we are creating an event hub, it has automatically created database for us. But if you want to create a new database, you can just click on the plus icon here. And here it has given an option about new database default and new shortcut database followers here. So the difference between these two is new database means it's going to be added inside to this event hub. And then you can read right inside to this one. Whereas the new shortcut actually is the read only database for you. You can connect to the existing one and you can get the data from there. And if you want to make any reporting purpose, then you can also make use of that. Yeah. So now if you click here, we have the KQL query set and notebook. We have a get data options. Um, it has given a multiple source options from where we can also get the data from different different sources. So for example, if you want to get the data from the event stream, you can also click on the event stream here, and then you can create your event stream option where we need to pick your data and then load into this one. So here in this case, I just want to pick the information about new table and you can give the name of that one. I just like to give it here as uh, demo table 2024-0605 and click on commit. So configure data source, create a data source connection to ingest the data from event stream. So it is asking if they, we have any existing event stream name or not. So this is for the existing event stream options, but if you don't even have a stream, then what to say? So in that case, you need to cancel this one. Yes, cancel. And then if I go back to the workspace on this one, then here on the top, we can click on new and we have an event stream options. So let's first of all, go inside to this folder, which is lab 17, and then click on here and new event stream. So we need to give it a name here, enhanced capability preview. Enhanced capability currently in preview enable you to reuse the events, route event based on the content. For now, we'll cover that in future videos. We'll just give it a name here, which is a kind of demo event stream for today's day, 2024, 0605, um, 20, All right, click on create. So, so far what we did, we just created an event hub and it has automatically created a KQL database for that. And we also saw how we can create a KQL database. And in order to get the data inside to that one, we need to create an event stream for that. So here we have a new source and then we need to click on the new source options. So on the left hand side, we have a source and destination. Let's hide for now because in order to increase the space here. So also let's drag a little bit down here for this. Yeah, so that we can align this one. So we have a new source and then we have an event stream and then we have a destination. That's a default thing here. So we need to click on new source here. Either we can use sample data, Azure event hub, IoT device or custom applications. So selecting the sample data here and from the sample data, we have option multiple things, bikes, reflex options, yellow taxi, stock market. So here let's click on the bicycles here. Um, so you can give the name here, SRC bicycle. Just giving a name here and then click on add. So reflex compatibility. So what does it mean is actually it is referencing to the data activator with data activator, which we're going to cover in future videos on that. So here we have a SRC bicycle, which is we added here. 
and this is the name and this status is active. If I click on data preview, then we are able to see data is being generated on this one. Yeah, this is loading up the information. That's cool. And now we have option about demo event stream 2024, which is what we have created here. All right. So once I added here the source, and now when I click on to this one, the demo event stream, which I just created, you can see it has automatically showing up some data on this particular part, which means it is now transferring the data from the source to this event stream. And now from here, we need to load into the destination. So in the destination one, if you click on this drop down, we have the option about custom app, lakehouse, or KQL or reflex. So here the lakehouse refers to our one lake storage and KQL database is the one which we are going to add that. The reflex here is the means which we call it as for data activator. So either we can use that, but for now we are going to just use this one. I just want to give you a glimpse of that. So KQL database here. So once you click on that, we have a two options direct ingestion or even processing before ingestion. What does this two mean? So direct ingestion in the sense, if you directly want to load all this data into your KQL database, you can directly use that without any transformation. But if you want to do any kind of transformation before to that, then you can also select this option, event processing before ingestion. So this cannot be changed once the KQL destination start ingesting the data. So you need to give it a name, destination name, and then you need to give all the other information here. All right, let's give it a name here is um, demo event stream with transform date 2024 And here I need to select the workspace. It is not picking automatically. Maybe it will come in future, but not for now. The workspace is demo yeah, lab 01. And database here is the one which we created today. And also destination table. If you have any, then you can also select that or we can also create a new one. It is picking up the information from the database, no table found. So we need to click on create a new one and give it a name here. Demo event stream underscore table underscore 2024 All right. So what is the input format here? So here, select the format of the incoming data you want to ingest. Data from event stream that matches the selected format will be ingested into the Custo database here. So by default, we have JSON. It has picked up automatically from the data. So that's the one. And after that, we have event processing. The event processor enables you to transform and preview the data that is being processed for the destination. Yeah, if I zoom out a little bit here, Yeah, we have the option here about open event processor. So let's click on this one open event processor. And now this open up into a new window where we can do our transformation steps here. All right, so we have this information here event processing editor and we have this coming up from event stream and to the KQL database. But if I mouse over here in between to that, we are getting a option about plus and then delete here. So when you click on the plus icon, then we have the option to do aggregate, expand, filter, group by, manage field or union here. So for example, if I click on group by option here, a new tab opens on the right hand side and also new card is added in between to that. So let's give the name is group by one itself and then we have the aggregated type here. I just want to count here and the fields here which we need to pick up from the list of columns from that particular stream here. Um, so here it has to be, let's type it here, partition, no bytes and byte point ID. For example, let's take that as a byte point ID and then count up byte point ID here. So now let's click on add here. This is going to add that information and after that we need to click on done. So this is a demo, uh, I mean, if I click on the demo event stream here and then click on data preview, then I should see some of the data loading up here. Yeah, now if I click on the group by here and also I can be able to see that information group by and this is the end date here. And finally, if I click on KQL database, this is not going to give the same. This is also going to give me the same information because this is actually transforming the data and then loading into that KQL database here. As of now, we have not created any schema on the KQL database. So whatever we are doing up here on the group by step is going to load the data into that KQL database here. 
So once you're satisfied with all these operations here, then you can click on done. So this is going to be added here. From here to and finally we have this destination and now we need to keep on add here. So this will pick the data from this one source bicycle and then go to this demo event stream and in the event stream we have made the group by options and from that is going to load the final information into the KQL DB here. We also have a plus icon here while this is loading. If I click on the plus icon, um, it is not giving. Yeah, it is also asking about to add multiple different sources. That's also another cool feature. So if you just want to load the information into KQL also or to the lake house or even if I want to use the same information into a reflex, then also you can make use of that here. While this is loading, if I click on this one bicycle, oh, actually I need to keep this active. So we click on the bicycle and click on data preview. So we have some information here and we have the street, we have the neighborhood and we have everything. So if we click on this stream. So we have all this information here, but if I click on the demo event, so there is no data currently, so we need to click on refresh again. Let's wait for a few more minutes and then we'll see how this works. While this is working here and we see both of them are now active, the source and destination, but here it has added a few more options. If I zoom in here, it has actually added three different actions, which is one is for stream another is for edit and then is the delete here so if i click on this edit option it is actually giving us the destination information from where this has to be loaded into the kql database here so that is what happening here and if i click on the event stream here then this is going to open up this editor which we have worked on the event processing editor so where we use the group by options on to this one so if you want to modify something you can also make the changes here and then click on save for now, this is nothing, so we just need to click wait for a few more times. Yeah, now you can see we have the data on to this data preview on the destination here. So let's go back to our workspace and then have a look for the information on the KQL database itself. If I go back to my workspace, and this is the one, and if I open up my event hub, Not this one. If I go back again, if I go to the outside of the folder, yeah, it has added outside of the folder. So let's click here and move into the folder, which is lab 17. All right. We have a demo for today's date. Yeah, that's correct. All right, so this is the event hub we have and if I click on the database from that KQL database. So it has giving up all these options and there is no tables as of now So clicking here. Generally, we should have a data table here. Yeah, so just now refresh here here from the top menu. So inside to this one we have today's date. And this is a table which we are defined on the stream area. So this is a table. So if I click on this one, we can able to see the information of this table. And this is the information which is six minutes ago, row bound to 65. And this is the two columns available inside to that. So if you want to build a power bay report on top of that, then you can click on this one, build power bay report here. Um, then you can click here. And we can just drag and drop and build the visuals on top of that and then we can share this report to the end user. All right, so if I just click on the count here in the card visual. Yeah, now we got the information 76 here. So clicking here and save this report. View the name onto the workspace. We don't have option here to save inside to a folder. That's why it is saving up outside of the folder. Later on, we need to move that, but it will come in future so that we can save inside to the folder itself. So here, this can be event stream report, which is 2024-065, and click on continue. So open file in Power BI to view, edit, or get shareable links. So clicking on this one, so that we can see how this looks 
in regular Power BI report. All right, so if you want to get further more data, then you can click on this menu here on the event hub. And we have multiple sources option, Azure Storage, Amazon S3 Bucket, and Real Time Hub, Data Flow, and Pipeline, and everything. And if you want to query it here, then you can also do it here. Selecting here, show any 100 record. So clicking here, then this is going to load the KQL language. This is pretty simple itself. Um, so this is the name of the table, and then pipe, and then take 100 is going to load the top 100 records from that particular table. And if you want to summarize something, then also you have the option about to do that. So they have initially they have given some examples how we can make use of that. But if you want to customize further, you can also do that. And if I go back to the report, now you see it is showing up here 92 here. That's great. If I refresh this visual, now it's showing up 97 here. So it's keep on adding up the information into the stream analytics here. So if you are currently using up here, then you can keep that active. But if you're not using up here, then you need to make sure that you are turning this off. So I'm going back to this one event stream and then converting this to be inactive here because we don't want this to destination happen every time and it will consume the capacity for us. This I did only for the demo purpose. So I just want to turn this off in order to avoid the capacity utilization. So both of them is now deactivating it here. Right. So I just added one more table into this KQL database. And if you look into this home screen of this event house, it is giving the system overview. This is running up here and we have one leg standard storage database size here and one leg stand cache storage here. So now what does it mean by one leg storage here? If it is 150 or not, yeah, 150. All right, so if you click on the one leg standard storage, the amount of one leg storage used by this event house, this cold storage is used for less frequent access data, optimizing cost and minimizing efficient data retrieval for historical queries. And one like cache storage, the amount of hot storage consumed for this event host, this is high performance storage tire for your most active data, ensuring the fast possible access for real time processing and analysis. So that's correct. So as of now, it is getting the data from the sources and then that's why two different places here. One is the cache and another is the standard storage. So this is actually showing up here from the last record, how this is working up here. And yeah, that's all the other information which is here and who is the user here and what are the databases and items here. Now, when you look into inside to this one, the table which I created here, it's actually a demo and then we have all data stream event and then we have a DS. If you click on this one, this is what we have seen. So it gives the information about this particular row count happening here. And for this all data event, this will be much bigger inside I believe because I'm loading everything here. Yeah, 55 KB. And this has to be a give itself correct. So this is much bigger inside. So if you want to build the data on top of that, you can build the report on here or you can use it in another. So this is how you can make use of stream analytics in real time intelligence in Microsoft Fabric. If you like this video, just hit the big thumbs up button. If you have any queries and feedback, let me know in the comment section below. And on this, we have covered only the top sessions, but we are going to cover much more in deep for in the future videos of that one. But if you have any specific area to focus on, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Keep learning. See you in the next video.